Hey guys, welcome back. So this is actually not a ranked game. It's a unranked yes. tournament uh, game. We had a tournament in our Discord called the Punic Wars, and it's actually still ongoing. Uh, this is going to be a best of three uh, match, well, tournament between me and uh, I Love Dogs, but uh, we're only going to do this one game for now. Uh, the ELO is about the same. Usually I'm about 50 points higher than him, but it's essentially the same. Uh, I've been as high as 1200 and change, and he's been uh, high 1100, almost 1200. So I'm playing as the Gajaras. I think I finally learned how to say that correctly. I was, I was screwing it all up. Uh, and he's playing as the Turks. Now, when you pick Turks on Arena, there's got to be one thing that you're thinking about. Probably Fast Imp, right? Because that's where they really shine. They, they get chemistry for free. Whoa. I didn't realize he shot his deer with it. Well, I'm just now rewatching it. Um, he actually shot his deer with a town center. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, but anyway. Maybe. Okay, there we go. That's what he was trying to do. Big brain time there. Um, and I'm also pushing my deer as well. The, the Gajaras do get uh, two uh, berry bushes immediately. So I start off with that. And I put all my herdables inside of my mill immediately. Uh According to Spirit of the Law, when you put your sheep inside of the mill, it's like equivalent to every 12 villagers is like equivalent to two Dark Age art. Let me back that up. Every six sheep is equivalent to about one villager. So with eight sheep in there, that's like what? 1.2 or something like that, Dark Age villagers. Uh, but the other thing you don't think about is the fact that you're getting a constant trickle of food and you're not having to use a villager to, to do anything with it. And you don't have to collect wood first. Uh, so it's actually pretty strong. Um, I was originally going to do this strat against... Um, evet. Scaring me there. I was really originally going to do this strat with uh, Lithuanians. I wanted to do a monk siege push on Arena, right? Well, the reason I picked uh, Kajaras instead is because he picked Turks. And I was thinking to myself, okay, he picked Turks. Uh, I don't really want to go into Paladin and then get countered by Camels, yada, yada, yada. Maybe Gajaras would be a good one to do it with because of their their, their strong bonuses. They have some of the best Camels in the game. Um, you know, I think I could probably do it with Gajaras. Also, I just kind of wanted to try it out, you know. So, decided to go with Gajaras. Now, with the Turk Fast Imp, the best time to hit them is right when they're in castle trying to save up for imp because that means they're probably one town center and they probably uh don't have any military right because they just want to get up and the villager counts 19 to 18 uh i did get housed for a second there he doesn't have loom i think i do have loom be. yeah i do have loom okay uh getting my lumber camp up building some more houses sending bills to berries yada 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 we're actually exactly 22 bills to 22 bills 23 to 23 and I click up so we're on our way to feudal age now he's gonna stay in feudal a bit longer because he's trying to go fast imp uh, adding in some dark age farms now I gotta say my original strat of going siege and monk it's a risky strat and in fact it doesn't work very often but I thought maybe he would expect me to play kind of safe being a tournament game and I was like maybe I just you know it's the first game you know we have it's the best of three so there's a good chance that if I throw this one completely, I can just, you know, try and win the next two. Risky idea. And I almost pay for it really dearly. So he's dropping his buildings here. Uh, he has three more villagers than I do. I'm on my way to castle though. Because I want to get prioritized castle. And he wants to prioritize imp. So I will be in castle right now. Villager counts 29 to 25 in his favor. I'm coming forward, building buildings. We got a barracks for some pikes. Uh, we got um, a monastery for some relics and some conversions. And we've got some siege. And we're going to take the gold right in front of them too. Now, players do a couple of different things whenever you do this kind of monk siege push. Sometimes they will drop castles. Uh, sometimes they will just try and boom a bunch of TC. So if you get in, you, they get the scarce in their villagers. Some do extra walling. He's actually going to drop a castle and do walling. And I, I thought maybe he wouldn't go for the castle because he's trying to go fast imp. But then it makes sense because he's going to need, you know, either two buildings, like a university or whatever, 
anyway to get up he's gonna go for the castle which makes sense and because of these insanely close wood lines I mean like talk about perfect map generation right here for him in this regard uh, this castle is going to range over here and it's gonna range pretty much over here I mean there'll be a, a small window of opportunity over here uh, but uh, really fortunate for him that he had this well-placed castle and these close wood lines so I'm collecting relics uh, 33 to 32 villagers but uh, I do have the sheep working for me as well, and I have relics working for me. Uh, coming over here, he does get the light cab upgrade for free, uh, being Turks. Now the funny thing is, is the only sieves that do not get pikes or halbs are Turks and Gujaras, which, funny enough, are going up against each other today in this matchup. So. Neither one of us can really do a whole lot against each other's cavalry because of that. Now, he comes over here and starts wall stonewalling over here. Like, talk about foresight, man. Like, because as soon as I realize I can't get through here, and I will realize that pretty soon, I'm going to try and come over here, and it's already preemptively walled. Like, good job from him. And I think he's actually doing a better job getting out bills, too. I may have been idling my TC a little bit. Um... He's got some siege to, to pressure if I kind of try and come in there with rams or whatever. Now, I probably should have realized that I was not making headway here from the get-go and just went ahead and immediately started uh, transitioning to more town centers and booming and yada, yada, yada. But I did not. So I'm going to come over here and try and go over to the side, which is already being walled up. Really unfortunate for me. Villager counts 43 to 40. He has three more villagers. Uh, and the thing is, is he's idling his stuff. Let's see. Yeah, it has nothing queued up because he just wants to get a little bit more gold and click up to imp. And in fact, he can do it right now. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Still hasn't done it. Now, I'm getting a couple of different upgrades on my monks where they, they walk faster, they have more hit points, and now he clicked to imp where they can convert siege and buildings. Because my plan was to try and come in here and, like, look at these trees. It's like, and he even stopped from overcutting right there. Like, just super easy for him to wall off. Really bad for me. And here come the Janissaries. Like, Janissaries have eight range. It's pretty strong. Uh, he's shooting my gold bills now. I don't really have an answer for this because my siege is going to, you know, only has seven range, so he can just keep backing up. And I do have a lot of monks, but like monks versus Janissaries, as we will see, is not very good. <laughs> and so I don't even realize he's got this extra wall over here. So it's like, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to break through with these uh, these armored elephants and everything. And yeah, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. And he's 45% of the way up to Imp. Trying to push him back with these Maganels. So I want to get you through here. I'm like, okay, I'm going to punish him before he gets up to imp. It's not going to happen. I even came over here with these villagers that were getting shot by the Janissaries. Dropped the town center over here. As far as map control goes, I got it. As far as relics goes, um, yeah, all five of them there. I got them too. And look, he can just shoot my freaking Maganels because, uh, you know, they don't have the range. And now I can't get through. So now I'm coming over to here. It's just like super good job delaying me. Now I think... Uh, let's go to his resources point of view. I think if he had transitioned some to stone uh, and maybe boomed up a little bit more, it might have even been better. Uh, because, well, I don't know. I guess you go to M if you want to use your advantage, get your hand cannons, and get your bombard cannons. So actually, he's probably doing the right thing. And look at this. You can actually heal. This is, I think, the only siege you can heal with monks. Um, I'm healing my, my armored elephant here with monks. It's pretty funny. Uh, and I added in a couple scorpions, but once again, they only have seven range, and the Janissaries have eight. So all my siege was a waste because I can't reach them. Real big waste. And even this guy's not doing a whole lot, and his Magnol just keeps shooting. At least it doesn't cost me anything to heal him on an elephant, right? So he's an imp, and I'm like, oh, crud. This is not good. I mean, he's got 13 Janissaries already. I'm trying to convert his Magnol, actually. Gets my uh, my elephant finally. They want to convert his Magan out. You think that many monks would probably be able to do it? Nah, no, nah, can't do it. And here comes the first of many bombard cannons. And what does he do? 
Well, he immediately targets my monastery with five relics. <sighs> so aggravating. Should have had the foresight that when I saw he was a nymph, go ahead and just start relocating these guys back home. But now I'm adding in a lot of extra farms because I re I'm realizing, yeah, I'm in a world of hurt right now. Like, this is so not good. Uh, still trying to distract him over here, hoping that maybe he'll stay home versus come forward. Monastery goes down. The relics have been ejected, so no more free gold for me. Uh, and I have, I do have plenty of gold. Between being on gold as much as I was, having the relics, um, I think actually we can go to statistics here. Yeah, at that time I collected thirteen hundred twenty-seven gold from those those relics. Oh no, back to map. Uh, so that's actually, you know, a lot of gold for. I mean, I was going to make these monks anyway. So, and this is really bad. Like. Talk about just throwing away siege. Ugh. Walmart cannons with their 12 range. And the Turks, there that's where they can get an additional plus 2 range, too, if they want to at some point. So, just trying to keep them busy over there. Adding in more town centers at home. Um, I actually do have the villager lead now because he's been idling his stuff a little bit, trying to get uh, more. He was idling it to get some Janissaries. Uh, he's on one town center still. Has five villagers queued up. Um, you know, I'm on three town centers. So... Now it's a military and being an imp versus having more eco. 14 more villagers, and now he's coming forward with these janissaries. They don't have any upgrades, but they don't really need any upgrades. He's got bomber cannons, boop, there goes my Maganel, and he's got janissaries. Even coming forward to build an outside the wall barracks. <laughs> I'm going to try and get a conversion here. No, I think he just deleted them. And there goes a Bombard Cannon. Pretty happy about that. Tried to snipe his Maganel. Unfortunately, was not able to that time or that time. Ugh. Keep the Bombard alive. I figured, you know, I might as well uh, try and get some uh, conversions here with the, uh, with the monks. Because I already paid for that tech where I can convert Siege. <laughs> And look, all those spearmen just down the toilet. This is so bad. Oh, man. Lose the bombard. Get one shot. Uh, but that was really bad, too. Got to try and keep these monks alive. Lose my camel rider. Thankfully, the gunpowder is pretty inaccurate. Lose a bill there. Uh, I actually think I have enough to... Yeah, I could just buy my way up to, cat, to M, but I uh, still have not. Tons of gold. Not enough food. Really bad. I think the thing that I struggle with the most is resource management. And actually, I think I had enough food for a second ago. Yeah, I queued up, uh, well, I call them shawarma riders. I think it's Shravansha or however you say it, but uh, I like to call them shawarma riders. So the shawarma riders are going to actually save my freaking ass. And the reason why is because they have the ability to dodge projectiles. Now, um, I didn't know if it worked versus gunpowder. I honestly didn't. <laughs> I did not know if it worked or not. But uh, <laughs> I was like, this is not looking good. I mean, he's got the score lead. He's got the military. He's an imp. I haven't even clicked up yet. Like, uh, I need, this is like a last ditch effort uh, to try and stay alive. So don't have enough numbers there to really do a whole lot at first. Start getting a couple of uh, good engagements there. I mean, I'm losing a lot, though. But, like, at least I pushed him back a little bit, gave myself some time. Uh, this is bad. I thought maybe I could get some conversions on his Janissaries. What a horrible idea. That is such a terrible idea. I think I get one out of all of that. Yeah. And I just lost like five monks, six monks. Yeah. Oof. Should not have done that. Should have saved him to keep healing up my uh, shawarma riders. But now he's just taking down my freaking stables and I can't get him up. Thankfully for me, he can only build spearmen. Me too. But you know what I mean? If I had been up against pikes, it could have been really bad. Lose, uh, get, getting attacked here, forcing them back. So now I'm thinking, okay, what I really need to do, because all this is getting pressured, is I need to start adding them back home. Uh, that way I have a chance to kind of amass some of them. If I can get a, a big enough mass of them, I might be able to stay alive. So I'm going to start losing all of this. But thankfully, I'm mostly just losing buildings. I'm not really losing a lot of villagers. As you can see, I'm just running away. Running away, running away. And I think he made the mistake of taking out these things that don't really matter when he should have been trying to hit me at home. 
If imagine if you come through here, and I finally have enough to click up to imp again if I want to. I'm still killing up swarm riders. I think that was probably the better call to just keep making these guys. But if you had come over here and busted through this gate here and just sat right about here next to this tree, uh, all these town centers, and he could just protect them with the Janissaries, all that would go down. Uh, and he has a lot. I mean, that's a lot of units there. I'm just going to come over here, drop the town center over here. And just keep making these guys. I'm also getting the upgrades on them too. And you can see the charge bar underneath your health bar. So like I said, I think it was a big mistake. And probably what ended up costing him the game was delaying coming over here. Because I'm booming back into this. I have 82 villagers. I have three town centers again. Uh, and I'm just going crazy on farms. I mean, look how many guys I got queued up. I should just probably drop a couple more stables too, honestly. Like, this is a ridiculous amount of shawarma riders queued up. Even adding a couple more monks in. And the reason why I added the monks in is because I can convert his bombard cannons. Which, you know, I have no real answer for at this time. Other than the monks. Adding in more stables. Got six there. And he's trying to get in. Now let's go to his point of view and see what he can see. Not V-Lock. Okay, take the V-Lock off. Let's just do Fog of War. So he does not see this economy over here. He does not see all these former riders coming out. I deleted part of the wall so they can actually run out here a little bit easier. He takes out my market. I mean, look how bad this is looking. This is looking horrific here. Uh, military number, he's got 58. It's Janissaries and freaking Bombard Cannons. And now he's adding in hand cannons as well, which was a great idea because he can spam them out a lot faster. And this is probably one of the biggest play of the games, play of the tournaments. Uh, huge surround on him. He didn't try and hit run. I don't think he realized just how good my guys are versus gunpowder. And now for some conversions on the Bombard Cannons. Woo, boy. Two of them now. <laughs> oh, huge cleanup. He went from 58 military to 29. I mean, just absolutely huge. Keep one of the bombards alive. Still hitting him. He should have tried to get him in a choke point a little bit sooner. Did not. Uh, and now I'm going to have to fall back a little bit. But I mean, just wow. Now I can go heal my guys back up. I have 38 to 23 military. It's producing from multiple stables. I have the villager lead. Um, What's that? 18 more villagers. And now I'm actually pressuring him with his own converted Bombard Cannon. Pretty happy about that. And, you know, I think if he had gone in... Oh, pull these guys back. If he had gone into some camels, that could have done a really good job clearing up these guys because these guys are countered by camels. But the problem is, is if he does that, I'm just going to go into my own camels because I have the best camels in the game. Once again, according to Spirit of the Wall. Uh, he is spending his resources as soon as he gets it. I mean, he has l pretty much nothing in the bank. Has a few things queued up. Didn't grab any of these relics. I think he probably should have done that. But he probably also just thought he had this game completely. And he really did if it wasn't for these guys right now. 88 to 68. It's a 20 bill lead. Taking down his production buildings. I mean, this one Bombard Cannon has done a lot for me. I'm really... Really appreciate him converting over to uh, my shawarma religion. Um, <laughs> adding in my own siege workshop now. Have a university. Uh, once I get up to imp, which I'm 45% of the way, I want to get my own uh, uh, Bombard cannons out as well. And dropping a castle over here, I want to start taking some middle control. Military count 62 to 42. I mean, just imagine if he had pikes or halps. All these guys would have had a really tough time. But uh, he doesn't. Really, really, really fortunate for me that he doesn't. And he's going to start shooting this castle. I can't remember if I keep it up or not. But uh, let's see. I'm trying to snipe his bombards with my own. He's got spears up front. I don't really care. They're just spears. I want your expensive hand cans. I do lose my bombard. That was unfortunate. Uh, I think he loses his though. Once I can take out the gunpowder, I can just run away from the spears. Yep, gunpowder's down. Alright, now we're running. Bye. And there is the GG. Wow. Insanely strong. Shwarma riders for the win. Look at these guys right here. What a bunch of badasses. 
I mean, I had no idea whether they'd work against Gunpowder, and they did a phenomenal job uh, against Gunpowder and ultimately helped me win the game. Whenever I was thinking, uh, people in the chat that were watching the tournament were like, this is GG, like this is over with. And it probably would have been if it wasn't for th these guys right here. So <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll catch you next time.